Aloha, everyone. Michelle Melendez with BlossomInnerWellness.com and StandTogetherHawaii.com. This is also on the voice of Kona Radio, 100.5 FM. Mahalo so much for listening on the islands. If you're watching on YouTube, much mahalo or rumble, very much mahalo. Uh, I wanted to share a story about my father's suicide in 1994. Today is the 30th year anniversary of when he died. And I wanted to share a little bit about that because it's important to talk about it. You know, I have a, a family member who doesn't want me to, who doesn't like it when I share this because I don't know, you know, if they are embarrassed or it just makes them sad or I don't know. But I think it's really important to discuss suicide because it's very real. It's happened more in the past four years than, um, than, than, than the past other years. I haven't looked up at the stats, but the last time I did uh, during the COVID situation, there was a lot more suicides because uh, people were alone. And uh, But I do want to share my story. And before I do, I want to share my sponsor, and I really appreciate uh, aceofcoins.com. They help people with taxes, getting better taxes, lower taxes, uh, eliminating tax debt, and also buying Bitcoin tax-free and also uh, licensing your own biometric data. So if you want to learn more about them, go to ACE, A-C-E of coins, C-O-I-N-S dot com. Tell them Michelle sent you. The What I want to share about this story is that, um, so I was 21 when this happened, and it, 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 was, a very, it was a very strange, it was very challenging uh, childhood at that time, or I was 21 at the time, <clears throat> but my father had uh, remarried and it was very tumultuous to go and, and visit him and see him. And uh, my sister and I were going to go see him the very next day. And then that the day before is when he committed suicide and uh, by shooting, by shooting himself. And I'll never forget the feeling that I had when I heard, first off, obviously it was shock. And then, like, tears, like, flooded, like Niagara Falls. Um, the next day, uh, I was very angry. I was, why, why did he do this? Why, how could he do this? Um, but here's the thing. I knew my father, I knew that, that this was going to happen. And because I had visited him before. And um, I knew there was something, I knew there was something off. I don't know if you've ever seen somebody who doesn't like they look, you look at their eyes and there's nothing there. And <clears throat> he was an alcoholic. He struggled with depression. So I remember the last time that I visited him, I was, I was picking up dog poop in the yard. And I remember just being really thankful just to be in the yard, picking up dog poop. Cause my dad was there. Um, so just a second. But what the reason why I want to share this today is not because I want people to feel sorry for me or whatever. Every single one of us has trauma like this, where every single one of us in even more. There are things that have happened maybe to you that nobody knows about and nobody can, can understand because they, they've never lived in your shoes. So I want to bring awareness to this. If you if you know somebody, a family member <clears throat> who's feeling alone, just reach out. Just reach out. You know, maybe even just a hello or a card. I mean, when was the last time somebody sent you a, a written card of just said, hey, I'm just thinking about you. This is a challenging time right now, and I just want you to know that you matter to me. So I think that that is an important thing to do for us right now. And also the fact that bringing awareness to suicide. And if you have thought about that, because I know I have in my 20s, I was very depressed and very, um, uh, just felt really alone. Uh, and I remember it was the first time I saw the movie The Secret, which there's some truth, a lot of truth in that movie and a lot of not not truth in that movie um, or things that, that, that could be stated better, I should say because it's a very good movie. But that movie changed my outlook. And it was, for those of you who haven't watched it, The Secret, 
it basically says that you what you think about you bring into your life so the constant thoughts and the constant which is a an energy our thoughts are energy so I started researching and really wanting to learn more about that and how that works and what I realized after studying neuroscience and studying human behavior because I've, I've been a fitness trainer and I'm actually filming this after my Be Fit With Love workout that I, I teach on uh, Tuesday mornings, every Tuesday morning. You can check it out at my blossominnerwellness.com website. Uh, you have to become a, a private member because all of my my programs are for, for private, for memberships. Uh, but this is a workout program I teach. It's um, If you want to check it out, you can learn more about it on blossominnerwellness.com. But um, what I learned when I started studying neuroscience and human behavior is that the emotions we have every day, we become conditioned and addicted to. It's a frequency. So as soon as you wake up in the morning, the body literally goes, how am I used to feeling? What is the frequency that I'm used to having in my body? So being a fitness trainer, I've been a fitness trainer for 30 years and the 30 years in 2006, it'll be two, it'll be 30 years. So uh, what I learned with that is that the women who struggle with weight are not struggling with the weight. They're actually struggling with the emotional frequency of somebody who struggles with weight. So the, the thoughts that they struggle with weight, the thoughts that dieting doesn't work, that, that is a frequency, you know, and not only that, there's two things with that. There's also um, their gut. Uh, they, they need to do a detox because mostly people struggle with sugar addiction, need to do a detox. The, the, that's definitely a gut thing. And I, I don't want to get into that topic. It's a totally different topic. But the first thing is to do a detox and then focusing on your emotional frequency. So your emotional frequencies create who you are. They create your thoughts, you know, constantly um, feeling sad in the morning, constantly feeling angry. I, I'm, I'm one that goes toward anger more and that actually fuels me that gives me passion to do the activism work that I do and uh but if I get too much into anger I can snap at my friends and I've done that and I have uh, for myself I have definitely ruined some friendships that I feel very bad about because of that anger and for myself I know that when I'm having a thought in my head that's anger about certain person for me this is what I do I put my hands on my heart and I say Michelle this is a normal human feeling there's nothing wrong with this feeling there's nothing to fix it's just a frequency and I don't have to do anything about it it's not good it's not bad it's not right or wrong it's just a human frequency an emotion and I breathe into it full deep breath and I keep breathing into my, the body huge huge deep breath until it starts to dissipate that that's that's what happens with that is it actually expands the emotion so the emotion that you're having the thought you're having over and over again I'm not good enough you know life sucks whatever life is hard the anger about things that are happening whatever it is the very first thing to do is have compassion for yourself and breathe into it and tell yourself there's nothing wrong with this feeling. I don't have to fix it, but it's also not right. It's just a frequency. It's just an energy and it doesn't have to mean anything. Being a human being, we are meaning makers. We are meaning makers. We make up things that we think mean certain things, but other things friends and family have a different meaning for it this is what this is what all the all the chaos is about people having different meanings for the same situation what does that mean to you it doesn't really mean anything but what you make it mean so the first thing to do you know a friend of mine she has she was struggling with uh, nicotine addiction and I said I said when you feel that nicotine addiction put your hands on your heart and tell yourself, this is just a frequency. I don't have to fix this. I don't have to make it wrong or right or good or bad. And then the key is a breath. 
breathe into the emotional frequency. It's like you're trying to expand it. So if you, you find where it's at, the emotional frequency is usually somewhere in your gut. Normally, a challenging frequency like my anger in my gut. So I put one hand on my heart and one hand on my gut. And I feel into that. And I go, Michelle, this is a normal human feeling. I don't have to fix this. And I breathe into it. And I try to expand that feeling into my body. And what happens is it starts to dissolve the feeling. It starts to dissolve the frequency. And then when it dissolves, now I'm free. Now, instead of going toward anger and letting anger run my thoughts and run my day, now I get to choose the feeling I want next. But if I don't do that for myself, anger runs my whole day. And if I don't do it the next day, it'll run the whole next day. It could run the whole week. It could run the whole month. This is why people stay stuck all the time. And in, in the same rut over and over and over again, repeating the same situation. But you don't have to do that anymore because now you have a, a tool that will help you out of that. So I just wanted to share this about suicide. And I'm going to pause the recording real quick because I want to, my battery is going to die. So let me pause it. Here we go. It's going to lose you guys. So that's what I wanted to share. Um, first and foremost, know yourself. Who are you? What are your patterns? What are your behaviors? What are the, what is the emotional frequency you have all the time? For me, I know I'm a very strong person. I'm very outspoken and I can be angry and I can snap at people because of my anger. Cause I'm not afraid of what people think of what I say, but that can hurt people. And do I want, do I want to, do I want to have that in my life where people think I'm a total pain in the butt? <laughs> you know, sometimes I don't care, but sometimes I do. Cause I love that person. So it's, it's knowing yourself first, understanding who you are, and then knowing your emotional frequencies that you are conditioned to having every day. It doesn't mean that's who you are. You know, I, I'm not an angry person. I'm somebody who has an emotional addiction to anger. And there's a lot of things to be angry about in the world. But is that who I want to be for myself? Is that how the relationships I want to have. And the only person who can fix that is not my thoughts about that person is my thoughts about myself is me. So somebody was like upset with a family member or they did this and they did that. I said, the only person you can fix is yourself. The only person you can fix is yourself. So you breathe into whatever it is you're feeling about that person or whatever it is you're feeling about the situation, you breathe into it with one hand on your belly, one hand on your heart. It's okay to have this human feeling. This is a normal human experience. There's nothing bad or right or wrong or good. It's just a frequency. It's just energy. That's all it is in the body. And then you breathe into it with your breath. Breathe all the way in until it expands and let it expand through your body. Then it'll dissipate then you're free. You know, we're talking about freedom a lot and people are sovereign, but are you free within your own mind? Are you free with who you are in the world? Are you free with yourself? Because if you're continuing to repeat the same patterns every single day, all the time, you are not free in your mind. But when you fully accept, this is a part of who I am. This is a part of what makes me me. And it's just a frequency. And I don't have to fix it. There's nothing to fix here. It's just part of my human journey in this present moment. And you breathe into it and you go, okay. And you send yourself compassion. It's the Buddha, I love his saying, you more than anyone in the entire universe deserve your love and compassion. So I wanted to share that message with you. If you are someone who's struggling with suicidal thoughts, please know you are not alone. You are so not alone. There is an energy and a frequency that loves you more than you can possibly know in a human body. The sun goes across the sky for you to have a human experience. This is all a game that's going, that's being played out. And my friend reminded me yesterday, she said, Michelle, 
this is really a game. Why are you taking it so seriously? And I was like, oh yeah, you're right. Because I do think this is a game for the human spirit, for our human emotions, for our, for our spirit to expand through the drama and the trauma of being in a human body and having the illusion of fear because there's really nothing to be afraid of. I really feel that when we die, we go on to another dimensional plane that doesn't have lower frequency. This is my thoughts, my own beliefs. I don't have any proof about this other than that all the near-death experienced people who I've watched say the same thing. There's an amazing love that's unbelievable and unimaginable that we can't really understand in a human body. So I think in my belief pattern that, and you can take this on or not, that um, that in the next dimension, we don't have this negative fear. I think this is an illusion. I think this is here because it's a polarity of good and evil that allows our spirits in a human body to make a choice. We have free will. We have freedom of choice. And the only way you can have choice is if you have two things to choose from, good and bad, the illusion of good and bad you know, good, right and wrong. So that's why I think that this third dimensional plane that we're playing in, this place called a human body and on the earth has these two polarities. And I don't think those polarities are in the next dimension because I think that our spirits come from love, which is a very high frequency. And I think that we wanted to play a game called being in a human body on earth with the illusion of fear and of, sadness well the sadness all these these are real emotions these are real real frequencies but the illusion of fear meaning there's nothing really to be afraid of there's nothing to be afraid of when you follow your guided intuition you're inspired in spirit intuition you're you're being guided toward what it is yours to do and if you were guided to watch this video then how about giving yourself a break from needing to be perfect and realizing that you're exactly who you were meant to be in this time. And it's okay to be you just the way you are. And breathe into any emotion that doesn't serve you. Ac acknowledge it and accept it as a part of who you are. And let it breathe into it so it expands your spirit. It expands out. And then you're free to choose what it is you want to choose. So I want to share my last thing I want to share is the story about my dad. Because after he died, two weeks after he died, I was laying in my bed and I just turned off the light to go to bed. And I just closed my eyes. But in my mind's eye, I could see my bedroom as if my eyes were open. I would just gone to bed. And I saw the door open in my mind's eye. And I saw him come into the room and he sat on my bed. And I felt him trying to calm me down because I was freaking out. <laughs> that never happened to me before. And he was trying to calm me down and he was, and I could feel him just there present with me. And I opened my eyes and he's gone. There's nobody there. And the next day I asked my sister, I said, I told her about the story. And she said, what time was that? And I told her, and she said that time she was in the house by herself, which was a few blocks away from me. And she said that she felt like he, she was going to turn around and he was going to be there. And she also freaked out and turned on all the lights. Cause she was like, you know, we weren't, we weren't accustomed to stuff like that, but I felt for myself that he was coming to show, tell me he was okay. He was all right. I don't believe, you know, a lot of the way the Christians believe about suicide. I don't believe that at all because I do believe there is an absolute love and compassion that's there on the other side. And it's with us right now. So on that note, let's do a quick meditation. And just breathe into your body. So first thing, just put your hands on your heart. Send yourself compassion. If you're driving, obviously don't do this. Send yourself compassion and understanding. Because only you really know what you've gone through in your life. Nobody else, nobody else really understands what you've experienced. So sending yourself compassion and love and understanding. And taking a deep breath into that. And then putting one hand on your belly and one hand on your heart. 
And just letting yourself be you in this present moment, whatever feeling you're having. Notice the emotional frequency. It's just energy. There's nothing right. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing good or bad. It's just a, fe- it's just a frequency. And breathe into it with your breaths. Just letting your breath expand that feeling. Like really expand it with your breath. Big, deep breath. Big, deep breath. Another big, deep breath. Just letting yourself acknowledge who you are in this present moment. Nothing to fix. Nothing to make right. Nothing to make wrong or good or bad. You're in a human body that holds energy, that holds frequencies from your thoughts. And whatever thought you have is not right or wrong. There's nothing to fix. It's just energy. So in this present time, in this present moment, send yourself compassion. Send yourself compassion. Let yourself feel that compassion in your body. For you being a child, for you being a teenager, for all the times you went through as a young adult, for all the times you went through this past four years, send yourself compassion and understanding. Nothing to fix, nothing to make right, nothing to make wrong. Breathe into that frequency. And then putting your hands on your lap with the palms up. Sending this feeling of compassion to all of your family and friends. People who annoy you. People who you like to make wrong. And people who you like to make right and who you adore. Send them all compassion. Because you really don't know what's going on in their mind. And then feeling that frequency, go out to your neighbors, the people in your general vicinity. Everybody has something that's going on in their life that's challenging. Sending them compassion, just sending it out. And notice that this frequency of compassion goes out like the wave of an ocean, going out to your town, going throughout the whole Hawaii islands here where I'm at on Big Island, going out through the mainland, going out to Canada, Mexico, Africa, Europe, Ukraine and Russia, Israel and Palestine, China, Australia, New Zealand, Greenland, all of it, Scotland, everywhere. Wrapping around Norway, Holland, I love it, all of it. Every single location on this planet. Wrapping around back to you where you are in your present time. And just let yourself feel the emotional frequency of compassion for the world. Every single person on this planet has had grief and sorrow and anger and frustration and just sending the entire planet, including yourself, compassion. And let yourself feel that right now, just for the next 10 seconds. Give yourself permission to feel compassion for the entire planet, knowing that anybody right now who feels alone has a spark of hope that things can get better, has a spark of Knowingness that they matter. They matter in the world. And that anybody right now in this present moment who has suicidal thoughts, that they have a spark of hope and of love, that they are loved beyond measure, that they matter and that they are supposed to be here at this time. They have a gift to give to the world and that they feel just a little bit better right now in this present moment. We send all the people who have had someone who has committed suicide. We send them compassion and understanding. 
just knowing that that person needed to do what they needed to do at that time. It was a decision. And sending forgiveness to them and also forgiveness for ourselves. There's a lot of stories that go on after suicide. And none of it's right or wrong or good or bad. It's just a frequency and it's just a story. It doesn't mean anything but what we make it mean. So sending that out to the world right now. And trusting this game that we all came to play called being in a human body, living here on planet Earth, knowing that there is a source of love that is always, always there for us. When we acknowledge it, we can feel it and allow, allow it in. So we acknowledge it now. We acknowledge that the sun is moving across the sky just for us to have a human experience. The tides are running in the ocean. The wind is blowing through the trees. The honeybees are guiding, guided to their next flower. All by this infinite source, this infinite intelligence that is growing our plants from seeds into something that nourishes our body. How, what a miracle that is. So we just send so much gratitude to this higher self, this source of infinite love. Thank you. We are never, ever alone. We put our hands on our hearts. We send our, our own selves this love, understanding, and compassion. Breathing into this human body. Coming back into this present moment. Wiggling your toes and your fingers. And when you're ready, open your eyes. So just know that you are loved beyond measure. This is a game. Play it. Play the game. And also remember there's nothing serious happening here. It's challenging to say that knowing the war that's happening and, and the bombs that are going off. But we really did come to make whatever difference we can, whatever guidance we're being guided to do and speak and experience. It's just a game. We leave this planet going back to a love that we can't even imagine. And we look back at what we did. Were we loving to ourselves and to others? Did we follow our inspired intuition? Did we overcome fear, the illusion of fear? Did we do what was ours to do, our kuleana? Did we do it? We get to experience that. So I send you so much love and aloha from the Big Island. <clears throat>